the Jacksonville State Gamecocks had a great year in their last year in FCS under first-year head coach Rich Rodriguez. So, let's dive into the numbers here. You look at what they bring back, and that's number 57 in the country in adjusted returning production, number 88 on offense, number 29 on defense. Uh, defense brings back over 72% of their returning production. Uh, you're losing guys like uh, Stevante Tullis. Uh, you're losing guys like the running back Matt LaRoche. Um, you got some you got some dudes that you're not going to have. There's not a lot of depth at quarterback. Aaron McLaughlin is gone, but positive sign, Zion Webb is back. So that's a good thing, right? Um, you look at their overall numbers last year and you put them in with, you know, obviously they played an FCS schedule last year. But you put in the numbers, and it's pretty good compared to the rest of FBS. Now, these are just raw numbers, so let's not get crazy. But number seven in PPA margin, that's pretty good, especially against the competition, right? Uh, a lot of Conference USA teams are playing very similar schedules. I mean, you saw an FCS team come in last year and absolutely bang on some teams, and that was James Madison. They started out fantastic in the Sun Belt last year, and that is considered a wildly superior conference than Conference USA. So, looking at the numbers, let's start on offense. Rod Smith is the offensive coordinator here. Um, they went 9-2 and two last year. The postgame win expectancy was 8.09 and 2.91. Uh, they, were, they were good. Now, their projected record this year, not as good uh, because of the step up, right? This schedule is eh, fairly difficult. You know, you've got... UTEP at Coastal Carolina, Eastern Michigan, all within your first four games. Uh, you got some tough games at South Carolina, Louisiana Tech, et cetera, Liberty, et cetera. Um, starting on offense here, uh, Smith was the offensive coordinator for Rodriguez at Arizona. He was uh, Levy Smith's offensive coordinator at Illinois. So, you know, the guy's been around. He knows what he's doing. Uh, Zion Webb is the biggest X factor here, right? He got his seventh year of eligibility from the NCAA. He won his appeal. Um, if he gets hurt, there is no depth. Now, I would imagine Rodriguez is going to have some kind of a plan. Uh, Rod Smith will have some kind of a plan. We have seen this before uh, because those guys just take the pieces that they've got and find a way to move the ball, no matter what. Whether you got a quarterback that can throw or not, they'll find a way to get it down the field. They don't care. Uh, they do return four starting offensive linemen, so that's good, along with the leading running back, uh, Anwar Lewis, and they got four of their top five leading receivers back. Uh, this team leans on the run. I doubt they're going to be quite as run-heavy this year, uh, considering the depth of quarterback, but we'll see. It was 69.6% .6 of their offensive plays were runs last year. Uh, as far as the defense goes, Defense was not bad. They weren't very good against the explosive play, number 119 in explosive play rate allowed. Uh, but you look at everything else, number 38 PPA per drive allowed, number 25 rushing success allowed, number 41 passing success allowed. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Uh, Zach Alley is the defense coordinator. He was a GA at Clemson, linebackers coach at Boise, and then he was the DC at Louisiana Monroe. Uh, six of the top seven defensive backs return in the secondary. They got some JUCO transfers coming in, so I would imagine that'll help some, especially in a conference like this. Uh, they're returning 80% of their quarterback pressures this year, almost 90% of their tackles for loss, and then over 85% of their sacks from last year. Defensive line was really good at stopping the run uh, in 2022. You know, against an FBS schedule, are they going to be as effective? You know, in Conference USA, yeah, probably. You're probably not going to be able to do that against South Carolina. Probably not going to be able to do that as well against Coastal Carolina, depending on whether or not they keep some of the same schemes that Chadwell had there. But either way, uh, you got some tough offenses right out of the gate. I think it's going to be a bit of a culture shock early, but we'll see how they develop throughout the season. Um, you know, Webb is a key player. The running back, Lewis, wide receiver, Galvin. Uh, you got defensive end, Hartle, and the safety, uh, Colby Fukua. I hope I say that right. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, the projected favorites here. They're only a projected favorite in one game this year. Now, they've got a ton of toss-ups. they got five toss-ups here. I think this team is going to be better than what the numbers are telling us right now. Just a guess. 
I think they're going to be a little bit better than that. Uh, I've got them at five and seven this year. So they weren't going to make a bowl anyway. Uh, you know, the, the win total sits at five. I, if I had to lean away, I guess I would go under. But, I mean, you count out Rich Rodriguez at your own, you know, at your own peril. Uh, let's look at the keys here. They need to find more balance between consistency and explosiveness. You know, looking at what they did last year, uh, a lot of running, etc. You need to use that passing game a little bit more effectively. Um, the offense is going to remain aggressive for sure. Defense is going to need to improve a bit to help out the offense, especially you know limiting explosives. Uh, it can't be stated how you know how important Webb coming back was. Like him winning that appeal, uh, it could be the difference between six wins. It could be the difference between, you know, three wins. So, you know, looking at the record prediction here, uh, I've got them going five and seven. As I said, uh, the ceiling I think is six and six. Uh, I think the floor could be two and ten. This is an interesting team to pay attention to this year. I'm, uh, I'm very interested to see what Jacksonville State does. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.